Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leo D Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we're going to be making a two-tiered stand using these beautiful molds from Molds and Shapes. So I have this 8 inch mold here as well as a smaller one which I believe is about 6 inches and we're going to be making that two-tier stand with that. So as you can see we already have our resin already cured inside the molds. And I want to make something similar to this test design I created, which is my peony rose designs. And for that, we're going to be using um, our acrylic outliners again. So we'll get all sorted out and we'll get started. All right, so we're all ready. And we the first thing I want to do is I want to create kind of a, a template in the center just to kind of know that I'm, you know, I have the correct center for this piece. And so I'm using just a lid from one of my containers and then I'm going to take my outliner and as you can see it's the Pebio uh, acrylic outliner in pearl and I'm just going to go around and just kind of give myself a guideline going around the center area so that I just know that when I'm adding my flowers that they are in approximately the right positioning of where I want. If you've been following me for a while, you'll recognize these flowers. These are my peonies that are in an embroidery style. And uh, I do have a tutorial on my page for this style. So if you want to see that, I'll make sure I'll link that above at some point during this section here. And uh, so this style actually is very popular with cake decorators. And that's where I got the inspiration from is uh, I decided to use my acrylic outliner and then I use my paintbrush to kind of draw in the lines and it just kind of gives that texture of threads. And uh, it's a really simple but really beautiful technique. So. Uh, again, we're just going to go through and add in these details. We want to leave a little bit of spacing between each brush stroke because that does give us that thread-like look. And then we'll just do that for each one of the petals. And there's no right and wrong here because again, in nature, you know, every flower is different. Every flower is unique. So we want to do the same thing with our flowers here. So we'll just add in these lines. And then we'll also adjust the size of this flower. So I do think I want this one to be larger. So I'll just go around and add more petals around the edges. And we want to kind of keep somewhat of a round shape, but again, it doesn't have to be perfectly round. And then as we go through and add the rest of our flowers, um, I'll be varying the sizes of those as well, because we don't want them all to look identical. We want to look, make, have them look a little bit different from each other. So we'll just go in finish up these ones. I'm also going to be adding in some leaves and some other details as we go through. So I'll just add another one to the top here and maybe a couple more just to round those off. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to finish this up here and then I will add in a couple leaves and then we'll just going to go into a quick time lapse as I finish up the rest of these flowers as we go around. So you'll see how kind of I do that and then we'll add some other detailing on the other side of the time lapse. So we'll see you then. go in and add in some gold details now and I'm using my gold acrylic outliner for this one 
just kind of add in a little bit more color for a little bit of pop. So just going to finish that up here and then we're going to leave this to dry for a couple hours and then we'll be able to add in our glitter. And now it's time to add glitter because as you guys know, I love my glitter. So these ones here are from Glitter Babes. And of course, I'm going to be mixing that with my DuraClear gloss varnish. So we mix both colors together because I just want to add the hints of the red and the gold to kind of just pick up and brighten the center a little bit here. So we just made our paste and uh, we're just going to go ahead and paint these in. Now, normally, as I said in the instructions, you should wait a couple hours for that outliner to dry. Um, of course, I'm rushing this. So... Um, the, my outliner is not quite dry yet, so I'm going to be very careful here to make sure that I'm not touching the outliner with my glitter. So if you decide that you want to do this at the same time as well, just be really careful because you don't want to smudge the lines that you've created with your outliner. So, And in terms of the glitter, we want to just make sure that it's a little bit of a, of a, it's like a thin paste. It's not too thick and it's not too runny. As you can see, it just kind of acts like a, like a thin paste, almost like, again, I always reference reference like a uh, glittery nail polish. So you want that kind of consistency. So you'll just kind of adjust your gloss varnish as you go through to kind of make sure that you have that. So we'll go ahead and we'll add these in and then we'll have to leave this to dry for about six hours and then we'll be ready to top coat it. Liner and our glitter are now dry so I'm ready to add my top coat and once again I'm using my thin viscosity resin from counterculture just because again I really like this resin for top coating because um, we don't really have too many issues with bubbles with the thinner resins so I'm gonna go ahead pour that on top and then we'll use our heat gun to uh, heat out the bubbles here so and again with these molds it's a very good these molds are very good quality so we just want to be really careful that we're not adding too much heat to them so you'll see that I'm quickly just kind of going around trying not to spend too long near the edges and definitely don't use torches with these molds because um, the heat from the torch is just too much so it will definitely damage your molds for that but the heat gun generally is not too bad we just want to make sure we're not heating it too much so we'll let this cure overnight and unroll them in the morning. All right, it's morning and we're ready to take these out. And as you can see, they pop out really easily and they look amazing. So just look at these edges of this mold. That's one of the, my favorite things about this mold is the edging is just so pretty. They have these extra little details on it, which is just amazing. So there we go. And we're definitely going to go in and add a dome or a top, a second top coat to these. So we're going to go through those instructions next. Okay, so I've had a lot of people asking about the uh, second top coat and the doming process. So the first thing that we need to do is I like to add liquid latex to the back of these just in case we get any drips because we're not doing these in the mold we're going to be just kind of free pouring these uh, the resin on top of them so we want to protect the back from any kind of drips the one i have is, i just found online and it just is meant for special effects and uh, things like that so it's, i don't think it's anything specific that you need it's just uh, something that's going to dry clear and peel off easily so we'll just go ahead and we'll get that added to all of the edges of our uh, the backs here and to clean the brushes uh, we'll just be using some isopropyl alcohol rubbing alcohol and then just clean our brush off and we'll be all set okay as you can see the liquid latex has completely dried so i've propped them up on these containers because we do not want the uh, the tiers these trays to be sitting directly on the tabletop because when we're pouring the resin if we do happen to get any drips we want it to drip straight down to be captured by the liquid latex and not pool around the um, 
around these trays because that will just ruin our edges. So we'll just, I'm using my spatula to just go ahead and push the resin to the edges to make sure that we've captured every possible area. We're not going to have any divots or any low spots. So we'll go ahead and do that. And again, this, the, this design, uh, the mold design has a lot of details around the edges. So just, you need to be really careful that we're capturing all of that. So we're going to do that. And after we get all of this poured, I am going to be using a torch to get rid of the bubbles. Now, now that they're out of the mold, we can do that. So we'll just, uh, go ahead and finish up these edges. And then after that, we they'll be ready to just kind of give a quick sand to the edges. And then I will be drilling holes in the center so that we can add our hardware. And then we'll also be painting the edges gold. Now, not every I'm not going to be including all those processes here, but I will be linking those at the end of the video so that you can see the tutorials for those as well. Okay, so it's the next morning and we're ready to now remove the silicone from the bottom. I already did it on the larger two pieces, but I just want to show you on this small one. So really you just rub your finger along it and it comes cleanly off. As you can see, no issues at all. And here we go. Look how stunning this piece is. Honestly, the white against this red with those little bits of gold. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. And the glitter complements it so well. I'm just so happy with how this piece turned out. And I hope you guys liked it too. And if you did, please leave me a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye.